there's a $5 million prize for anybody that can, that, that can prove the election data that I have from the 2020 election is false. Oh, good old Mike Landell. Yes, that's the MyPillow CEO. Well, his bold challenge to prove his election fraud data wrong, well, it kind of backfired, it seems, because we've learned that someone did prove him wrong. It was a Trump supporter nonetheless. And now Mike Lindell is very unhappy about the fact that he's got to pay up. Now this all started in 2021 when Lindell claimed that he had evidence of voter fraud and offered $5 million to anyone who could prove him wrong. Yeah, of course, well the evidence offered by Lindell was it, was, it wasn't even weak, it was just pathetic, as we all know. And an expert named Robert Ziedman, who is a computer forensic expert, the 63-year-old Trump supporter from Nevada. Well, he did in fact debunk this conspiracy of Lindell's within hours, a task that would normally take days or even months of analysis. Check this out. What's your reaction today when you find out you've been awarded $5 million from Mike Lindell? Well, Aaron, thanks for having me. And I think it was uh, relief, not because uh, I, I doubted my own findings. The, in fact, I, I never expected to be able to show that it was bogus data because normally data analysis could take weeks or months and I had three days. But the data was so obviously fake that I spent a few hours before I could show it was fake. I always worried though, Mike Lindell has a lot of resources, a lot of money, and you never know. I, you know, I think the court system generally justice is served, but not always. And so I was never sure if I was gonna be awarded the money. And more than the money, I really wanted the people, the public to know what was going on. Well, and, and that's what you've accomplished. I mean, amazing, you'd say you think it would take you, you know, it could take you months, it took you hours. Yeah, Ziedman seems to be pretty good at what he's doing. And this is what happened when he tried to get his money. Well, Ziedman approached Lindell Management, which had organized the contest and asked for his money. They refused, but the competition's rules stipulated that any disputes would be resolved exclusively by final and binding arbitration. So Ziedman contacted a private arbitration panel who, in, who on Wednesday ordered Lindell to pay up. According to copies of the 23 page ruling obtained by CNN and the Washington Post. Based on the foregoing analysis Mr. Ziedman performed under the contract, the arbitration panel wrote in its decision, he proved the data Lindell LLC provided and represented reflected information from the November 2020 election unequivocally did not reflect November 2020 election data. Failure to pay Mr. Ziedman the $5 million prize was a breach of contract entitling him to recover. Now, of course, Mike Lindell is crying because uh, why would he want to pay? But also, you know, the fact that his conspiracy was debunked while well, he said this. Uh, this will all end up in court, Lindell told Vice News on Thursday before claiming that the arbitration panel's findings were somehow part of a wider election conspiracy. Ziedman uh, was the only guy that was at the symposium that didn't say it was from the 2020 election. I think it's a big setup, it's all part of the bigger cover up. And we got to get rid of the electronic voting machines and go to paper ballots hand counted. And when asked if he regretted putting up the $5 million prize money, well, Lindell was adamant that he would do it again and again, absolutely not. I would make it more, are you kidding me? It's all true. I put out the truth and what these guys did was horrible. Yeah, that's talk about wild. And um, you know, the way the fact is, the way the courts work is that arbitration um, decision, I'm confident uh, Ziedman is going into court and he's going to have that affirmed by uh, a lower court, which is how it goes because also, the reason these big companies love to move you to arbitration is because it's very unlikely that you're gonna win, but Ziedman happened to win. So the courts are pretty much not going to overturn it. I'd say it's a 99% chance that he's gonna go ahead and have to pay Ziedman his money. But Lindell, you know, he's not much for anything. So this should be kind of interesting how this goes. Alonzo. Lindell is the only guy who gave up drugs and became crazier. <laughs> I think he was better off back when he was using, he probably made better decisions. You know, and the funny thing about this being on Fox News, it's kind of like, yeah, we're paying $787 million for that same lie. So five million is a discount, you should probably shut up, pay and keep moving. Uh, <laughs> it's, what what can you say? Just like you said, it, it said it had to go to arbitration. Arbitration said that the computer expert is right. This guy obviously knows what he's talking about. He knows how to do computer forensics and, and whatever it takes. You know, they say it's 
it's difficult to prove a negative, right? But he's not even doing that. He's just showing, yeah, this is all data. It's all made up. It's all in Mike Lindell's head. Um, tell Lindell to to pay the five million, sell some more pillows, and keep moving. Yeah, I don't know how his pillow sales are going, but Lundell needs some help. And the fact that what I think, I, if I read that correctly, Ziedman had pointed out that the data wasn't even from 2020 election. So it's like Lundell didn't even pull the right year's data. Like what? And yet he said $5 million was on the line. This is just absolutely wild. But what I also find to be pretty interesting here is that even though Ziedman Prove that Lindell's election fraud theory was completely wrong. Uh, well, Ziedman still had this to say about being a Trump supporter. I can tell you that both times I voted for Trump, I've considered him the lesser of two evils in my mind. But I, I don't like Trump, I don't trust him. I think he, in my mind, he did some good things in his policies, but I think he's unpredictable, irrational. Uh, and I now am working with No Labels, a group that is going to put up alternate candidates if it ends up being an election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Which it very well may. And, and just to be clear, as I said, because you've been very open about you know, your, your political point of view and, and how you voted. You did vote for Trump twice. Will you vote for him again in any scenario? <laughs> I hope there's a, a different choice. I, I really, I'm gonna be frank with you. I don't like Joe Biden's policies and I don't think he's fit for office. Uh, I like Donald Trump's policies, but he's uh, very, uh, you know, emotional and erratic. And I think he could change policies in an instant if if he just decides uh, if he just decides to. It's it's kind of unpredictable. So I really hope there's a different choice. Yeah, it'd be nice to be a different choice uh, to have that available. But I think it's really interesting for Ziedman and what he did in terms of a lot of people like to think that Trump supporters are ignorant or foolish. And clearly this man is not, he is highly intelligent, yet he still thinks that Trump's policies and way of going about it, that he would probably still back him for president in the event of a showdown between Biden and Trump. That That's a really scary thing. It tells you that there are plenty of intelligent intellectual people out there who will still back Donald Trump. Alonzo, any thoughts? Yeah, the, the funny thing is he's calling Trump emotional. And there are a lot of intelligent, um, you know, educated, professional, whatever you want to call it, Trump supporters. And they vote based on emotion. And the emotion is I hate the same people you hate. That's how it works. So you have a guy like this who's a reasonable and intelligent guy. There's something he's not telling us. There's a reason he supports Trump. That he's not telling us. Who knows what it might be? Uh, it's really funny when he talks about there should be another candidate. Yeah, yeah, Ron DeSantis, because that's going to be so much better. Um, we're in trouble, no matter how you look at it. But but people like this, if you support Trump, I dismiss you. I don't I don't I don't really want to hear your argument. And I'm not saying you're dumb or ignorant or anything else. I'm saying that 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 Republican psychology of I hate the same people you hate, they're out to get me, blah, whatever it is, that's what powers, in my experience, dealing with people like this, listening to people like this, that's what it is. They're they're out to take my gun or something. Adrian, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for Barack Obama to come to the house and get the gun. I want to meet him. And he's been headed here since 2008. And he still hasn't knocked on the door. I bought a gun so Barack Obama would come take it away and I could meet him. And he's still, he, he's lazy. That's what he is. He's a lazy left wing. And this is the kind of logic that they believe. So I can't debate someone like this. No, no, I don't know who could, because it is it is very scary. But also, too, I find that a lot of these very intelligent Trump supporters, they know good and well what this is about, that this is about the opportunity to oppress marginalized people and to keep people in their place. It's about maintaining the status quo, because at the end of the day, when you remove all skin color, gender, sexual orientation, all these other things, you have to realize that this is a battle for resources. So the even if you thing. think of it back in the day when you have what you have cavemen and whatnot, people were fighting for resources, for opportunities, for access to things. And it's the same thing going on today. So whether these right wing Republicans use racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, all of these things to scare people into making them think that their resources will be taken away. It's just, it's all the same mantra and it continues to go on century after century. What were you saying? The other thing is the businesses, the corporations, they don't want to pay taxes. 
and they want to strip natural resources. They want to, you know, strip mine or, or drill for oil anywhere or whatever. And so they love these crazy social issues that'll keep common people voting. Um, what did I read recently? Um, John Fugel saying posted something like, "America's the only country where rich people tell poor people that free education and free health care is bad, and they believe it." You know, I'm paraphrasing the quote, but but this is what they do. They loved so they loved Trump. They knew who he was, but like, I don't want to pay taxes. So maybe this guy is one of those guys. Maybe he's he's rich. Maybe he's expecting that five billion, and he doesn't want to pay taxes on it. I I don't know. But as you said, the attack of marginalized groups, the fear of losing your resources, which is an unjustifiable fear, but a but a definite motivator, is part of it. And and the financial aspect is another. We saw we saw what happened when they eliminated the banking regulations. We're right back, you know, banks failing and, and the whole thing again. And let's all give each other bonuses before the bank goes under, right? Yep. Yep, just the hoarding of resources. That's what these people are doing and making these fear mongering agendas to get people to think they need to hoard their resources by using us them kind of rhetoric. It's absolutely disgusting. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.